All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, yeah, I respect that. If she need on the ride, do oh, I bet that? Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is JH. How y'all doing, Postal Family? Is everybody good? Is everybody cool? Everybody clean? Are you crisp? Are you feeling iry today? Let us talk, let us talk, let us talk. There's going to be two parts to this video. We're going to talk about something I mentioned in my other video where some people felt like I was uh, discriminating against the First Amendment rights. And then we're also going to talk about looking at the broader picture but first let me address what was said in my other video when i said that people were just going in and they were recording and trying to gain attention etc etc let me explain some things i'm all for first amendment rights hence the reason why i have this channel today but i want to be a little more specific with you guys because i can explain certain things to everybody to the fullest extent, but I can't understand things for people as well. <clears throat> so people may look at things in a shallow manner and say, okay, well, yeah, no, he's expressing his first amendment rights and etc." We were talking about the uh, gentleman that was filming inside of the facility. First off, I was referring to the guy that was filming after the lady and all that other good stuff. And then I also made a mention of the people that go around from the actual um, stand-up talk and they were saying that people are free to do as they choose i agree with that and in that it also said that you know the people are looking for attention etc and there was a few comments that said you know i have to disagree with you jay so let me let me break things down from a psychological standpoint um because i did take psychology in college as well and from a marketing standpoint that some people like myself had to um, endure because I do take some classes in marketing as well uh, just so that I can get to you guys um, people are exploiting a marketing to I gotta write all this stuff down I write my stuff down people are exploiting a marketing tool utilizing technology that is finding more and more success that is lean into controversy for attention I know this for a fact because my more controversial videos tend to get more views. I don't really like to do them, but they do get more views. Attention leads to exposure. When somebody puts a title out there, um, that's part of this marketing thing. We put certain titles out there and people click. Uh, and then it leads to more exposure. More exposure leads to more views. And more views leads to more money. So... That's the true intention behind a lot of these people that walk into these buildings. And you probably say, no, Jay, no, no. See, these people have hidden intentions. Think about it. Because why would somebody go into a post office lobby? Because there's so much controversy there? No, no. Um... What do we do in post office lobbies? What are they really capturing? Somebody uh, mailing express mail? It is their freedom to go in there, but what is it that they're attempting to do in a post office lobby? Seriously. The only thing they're gonna do is cause conflict because the people on the other side don't know, and that's why they put that um, stand up talk out how to deal with them so because people are unaware on how to deal with them they interact with them the wrong way and then they say aha I gotcha so it's called antagonistic behavior if you just go in there filming and you're just staying quiet sitting in the corner and nobody's paying attention to you you know what they do they leave that's what happens they leave that's true they don't show you those videos because 
There's no controversy in it. But enough about that, because I've proved my point, and that is the true intention behind them. Now, when they have uh, situations when they film the police stations and things that, you know, when somebody's getting beat up by the police or postal workers, you know, dumping mail, absolutely go for it. But inside of a post office lobby, seriously. So really, this is not up for debate. I understand there's a First Amendment, right? Record, record, record all you want. Um, Because that's kind of how I got out of losing my job because of the First Amendment, right? So I agree. But what I'm talking about is these people that go to auditors, they're not paid auditors. They're only paid by your views. Think about that. Today, I'm going to drop you with some knowledge, some knowledge. Today, we're going to talk about a, um, a broad picture. And I can only speak about this broad picture because I speak to a full audience. I say everything USPS because I am a truck driver. Yes, I've been to stations. Yes, I interact with supervisors, postmasters, managers of stations. Yes, I interact with clerks as well. If you don't believe me, look at my videos. I interview everybody. I also deal with the people over at the plant, the mail handlers, the clerks at the, at the, at the, uh, the plant. I deal with all the MDOs, the SDOs, and everything in between. That's why I can't say that I'm fully versed, but I'm more versed than a lot of people. How do I know this? Because there's people that, there's supervisors that are at the plant, managers at the plant, that do not have any idea on what goes on at stations and vice versa. There's managers at stations that don't know the full process of mail and how mail works. So I want you guys to think outside the box for a few minutes because I'm going to show you a video and some of you guys say, oh, well, we have that machine, the SIPS machine. And I spoke about this before and I didn't understand how this was going to impact everybody. But watch this little clip and then I will break down how this affects people. Because it didn't make sense before, but now to me, it makes sense. And I'm going to help you understand how it makes sense. Check it out. My name is Bridget Stewart, an operations support specialist here at the plant for the United States Postal Service. This is called the Spall Induction Parcel Sorter. It's called the SIPS machine. So we, um, this is one of 137 that we got nationwide. This plant just happened to get one. It sorts our smaller packages. Um, we are, right now we're running first class mail on it. It's all going outgoing, so it's not coming into Columbus or Ohio. It's all going out to out different states. Once they induct it on the machine and they put it on the template, it takes it up, it scans it, it scans the barcode, which tells them what the address is, and it sorts it to the destination. It runs roughly 2,000 pieces per hour, 30 to 40,000 per day. We have four other machines here. So on those other four machines, they were handled. But this machine is kind of dedicated to our smaller packages, so our smaller first class and smaller priority packages. A lot of it would have been handled manually. Some of it would have went on our bigger machines, but a lot of it would have been handled manually. But this just helps absorb some of that. This machine has 200, 200 slots. 100 on this side and 100 on that side. Here in Columbus, we do so much to get the parcels out. So, you know, obviously everyone cares to get these packages to, you know, these packages are going to kids, loved ones, parents, grandparents. We, everyone is concerned about getting the packages out. Well, I, the one thing that I would say that I really would like the, the customers to know is how hard the plant works to get their mail to them. Um, there is, they, we have a lot of dedicated employees that go to extreme lengths to get their mail out to them. We have increased package volume, so we're always looking on looking for ways to improve. So this is part of that is to be able to accommodate the increased package volume that we have. But, you know, in in 2020, it, it, it just skyrocketed. We got so many more packages because more people are shopping. For so we have seen an increase over the last few years, so we are trying to accommodate that. Working here at the plant for 24 years. I've been with the Postal Service for 24 years. I have really appreciated this job. I wish more people understood the, the lengths that the post office goes through to get their mail to them. You know, um, we have a lot of dedicated employees that do a lot to get the mail to, out to the customer. The customer, of course, is our main focus. We have packages, letters, flats, magazines, all that. 
yes, we do we handle it all. So what do you think? Oh, well, we've seen those before. Those are like the bundle sorters. Absolutely. They're like the bundle sorters. They absolutely like the bundle sorters. And when I said that they were going to be bringing them, it was probably about a year and a half ago. I had a video and I had to take that down because I was inside a facility. Um, but those things are going in stations. Some of you guys said, oh, we have them in our station already. I don't see what your point is, Jay. <laughs> Get into that. Remember when we were talking about this man consolidating? And remember about a month ago when they said that they were going to take five stations and put them into one facility? Okay. Yeah. All right. Now you have five stations at one facility. You had about four clerks per station. Four times five. That's 20 clerks that were working amongst five stations. Now they're working at one small facility with five different stations combined into one facility. Do you think they still need 20 clerks to run that one machine? Yes, they need people to run it because you guys are going to be like, well, we, yeah, they still need people to work, work and run it. Yeah, they do. They do. They absolutely do. Three, four tops, maybe, because you have to have the people on one side sorting it and dumping it and the other person on the other side, right? Yeah, but we just said there was 20 clerks. Between five stations now this one machine at one facility and you see how many pieces it separates and sorts doesn't take bathroom breaks this is what I keep telling you guys look at the big picture look at the big picture because reality is is when I mentioned it before I remember reading those comments oh that's nothing new we have that here I was like, okay, yeah, but when they start putting it everywhere, they're gonna, people are going to lose jobs. Well, you know, they're still going to need us. You're right. They did need you guys until they figure out, hey, let's put five stations, six stations into one building. And now what happens to all the clerks? You had 20 clerks. Now you need four. Now you have 16 unassigned clerks that have to try to find bids, possibly at the plants because the clerks can go to the plants. But where are these plants at? They're all getting consolidated as well, right? And they're putting more machines at the plants so it could be more efficient. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is this starting to register or resonate with anyone? I said yesterday that it's not to scare anyone, it's to wake people up and bring you the bigger picture on how the operation works. And because I interact with so many different people, I see the big picture. So when I talk to people and say, oh, well, the carriers, and you got to understand the carriers do this. Oh, man, the mail handlers are the main part of this. And, you know, there's people that work at stations that don't know what a mail handler does. There's mail handlers that have no idea what the clerks do at the stations. You know who knows that? I know that. So when I'm talking to everybody, I want you guys not to think about just yourself. Think about the big picture and the big operation. Because there are some facilities now that only have mail handlers in them. Some of you guys told me about that. I didn't know that was a thing. Only mail handlers. And then people are fighting back and forth. Well, the mail handlers want to do the work because the clerks won't do the work for the less money. And then they, the unions are fighting back and forth. It's a real funky smorgasbord. But you know who's going to be on the case? Jay's going to still be on the case trying to find out more information. And the information I pass is not always information that you want to hear. But it is information that you may not realize is impactful to you until it's too late. Trust what I'm telling you. Trust what I'm telling you. Because once they start moving, and I said this before, go back to my old videos. I said, once these people start moving, there's people that are going to say, no, I'm not going to go and travel that far. And you saw it in those videos when the news interviewed them, say, man, I either got to uproot my whole life or travel 200 miles round trip. And I don't know if I'm going to do that. I told y'all this was a way of doing attrition indirectly. I, I can't make this stuff up, but... Uh, back to the topic number one, all four First Amendment rights. But just remember, not every, you know, not every sheep 
is really a sheep trying to do good. There's a lot of uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. All right. So don't be a victim of somebody saying, oh, I'm just here just trying to record just to make sure. Because at the end of the day, if you don't give them no feedback or you don't give them anything to put on their social media, they don't get no views. Are you going to watch somebody that just walks into a post office lobby and no interaction happens? None? Sit there for 15 minutes and nothing happens? Nah. You want to see controversy. Because controversy leads to exposure. Exposure leads to views. Views lead to money. Don't be deceived by what people say they are trying to do. I know this. There are classes about this. Trust what I'm telling you. People do this for the money. This is JH. Y'all have yourself. I love trains in case you guys don't know. I can, I fall asleep watching trains. Y'all don't give a rat's ass, dude. I love this. Seeing this, this Norway. All right, y'all. I'll let y'all later. Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.